language and uh, humanity. And this chapter I found uh, new idea or new facts, which not related in lots of chapters, which uh, talk about the humans that teach toward their language, or write their language, or they, they may lose it. Fuck the last sound. The glossary related to this chapter, you can read it yourself. The overview of this chapter is, the first one is, toxic language, use of linguistic diversity, sociolinguistics, share and formal insights, also common attitudes, and to two points. Yeah, we time. cannot hear you well. Can you speak up a little bit? So, يعني, Matthew, there is no noise, but we cannot hear you well. Please, please speak up. Okay? Okay. Okay. Is it clear now? Yes, it's clear, but speak up. Zakallah khair. Okay. Okay, the last one is avoiding decreasing intellectual uh, misunderstanding. Okay, we have to some facts related to language and the human gender in lots of chapters. These facts are Women tend to use more correct forms than men. Greatest linguistic distractions between men and women. Linguistics come from technologically non-advanced food gathering or nomadic communities where sex rules were much more clearly delineated. Society lays down different rules for men and women. And here we have an example from the book. One example is chairman. This, wa this word was related to man only, but recently it's used for men and women. We can say chairwoman or chairperson. And we have uh, also another example like lady, like gentleman. That's such I can find this in the book. Change the language means change society. Ch linguistic change for social change very readily, but it's not always a simple matter to make them perceive social change. Okay, why that? Because language and society are so closely linked, it's possible in some cases to encourage social change by directing attention towards linguistic reflection of aspects of society that one would like to see altered. Insight from linguistics. This sort of involvement between language and uh, society by linguistics in issues to do with language and gender is an example of the way in which means sociolinguists feel. Quite rightly, that's important for those of us who have some insight into the nature of the relationship between society and language to, to make those insights available to the wider community in case where these insights can be of some value. Okay, let's state some facts or read some facts, state the last chapters about the movement of language. In the briefest chapters, we looked at a number of cases in which rational attitudes and discriminatory Decisions often made by governments or other official bodies acting out of ignorance or prejudice have led to language policies which have had determinal effects on children's education and even on societies as a whole. Also, we saw that the British government in the 18th century attempted to make the speaking of garlic illegal. We consider the uh, way in which non standard dialects of English, such as the African American vernacular English, have incorrectly been regarded as inferior or inadequate. We note that extent to which varieties of pidgin English were locked down on as a broken as a broken English. We observed the political disadvantage at which speakers of minority language 
such as Romani can often find themselves. In the French, for example, in 1994, a French minister tried to outlaw the use of English words in French. In the totality of reference, ground that the French language is under some kind of threat from English. In the USA, there has also been a powerful political movement in recent years known as the English Only Movement, which has been attempting to exclude language other than English from the educational, cultural, and political life of many American states. Some of those in favor of this uh, movement argue that the position of English is being threatened. And we have found many other examples in the book uh, talked about movements or um, using only one language in a country. Okay, what's the linguistic responsibility in this situation? One of the things that uh, linguistics in general and sociolinguistics in particular have tried to do over the years is to encourage people to think in a more sensible way about language issues, how they can, by providing them with more information about language. This is important for all sorts of reasons to do with fairness, equality, and even the future of humanity. Okay, what cause, uh, how do such attitudes impact language? If we change the language or if we switch the language, what's the impact in language? One of the three distressing consequences that attitudes of this type can have a language death. Okay, what's the language death? Can you tell me what's the language death? Abdullah Tawali, he is really ready to go ahead with the Sakhrib. Okay, Jackal Okay, thanks, Abdullah. Okay, a number of questions. One of the questions linguistics are often asked is how many languages are there in the world? It is not too inaccurate to say, however, that there are about 6,000 languages in the world today. This number is most certainly smaller than it is used to be and is getting smaller over time. What happens that? Communities go through a process of language shift. What's the meaning of language shift is? This means is uh, that a particular community gradually abandons its original native language in favor of another language. This has been a relatively common process in the social linguistic history of the world. Okay. Language shift is brilliant for language death. Most of the population of Ireland were native speakers of Irish Gaelic. This is an example of language shift then it becomes language death. Now, the vast majority are native speakers of English. Before the Roman conquest, the population of, math, of much of what is now French were speakers of the Celtic language Gaulish. Subsequently, however, they shifted to the language of their conquer conquerors, Latin, where eventually become French. Later on, the northern part of France where was conquered by the Germanic speaking Franks. These conquerors, however, eventually went through a process of language shift and ended up speaking French too. More language shifts. The Norwegian speaker speaking Vikings, who subsequently conquered and settled in the part of the northern France were now called Normandy, Normandy, also shifted from their Scandinavian language to French. A few generations later, as a result of Norman conquest of England in uh, 1066, 
this form of Scandinavian talk the French language to England. Once in England, however, it talks the descendant of the Norman, Norman conquerors only a few generations before they shifted once again this time to English. It has been shifted, then stated to English. What caused language shift? There are th there are three many other complex reasons why language shift take place. Perhaps a three important reason, however, are people's attitudes to language. They may write their language or they may make it disappear language. Frequently, through people abandon the language, which is the responsibility of their culture and history, and which has been the language of their community for generations because they feel ashamed of it. If rich and powerful people more technologically advanced than you think, your language is inferior, then the last reason is if you see that the people who think your language are treated unfavorably, that will be a powerful to change it. And here we can um, talk about Asma in, in America, which has uh, talked uh, Sawahili, and she didn't want to change her language and make, um, was a part of her language. So she will keep her language and her uh, her. Uh, attributes about her language. Okay, dialect D. We have language D, also we have dialect D. Just as in the case of the language D, so, so original and preferable attributes towards singular, non-standard varieties can also lead to dialect D. This distribution phenomenon is an, uh, much a part of the linguistic homogenization of the world. In many parts of the world, we are seeing less regional variation in a language. However, we have to acknowledge that much dialect lose in modern Iraq and in many other parts of the world is it due to process connected with geographical mobility. This is the first reason of dialect use, geographical mobility, and the second one is and is therefore probably sociolinguistically insatiable. These two reasons, uh, which is the geographical mobility and derivations, we can't change anything. We can't deal with that. There are nothing we can do about it. But the third reason which we can change it is, we can work against it, is the kind of dialect loop, which is the result of attitudinal factors. Dialect differences and dialect prejudice. If individuals suffer discriminations, uh, okay, this is the features of dialect differences. If individuals suffer discriminations as a, uh, as a result of racism, we don't suggest that they change their race. Second one, if individuals suffer discriminations as a result of sexism, we don't suggest that they change their sex. If individuals suffer discriminations because of the dialects they speak, then it's the discrimination that should be found out, not the dialect. Okay, how can we deal with dialect differences or dialect prejudice and uh, talk um, or teach English standards? There are three approaches we can use it to deal with non-standard varieties in an education setting. The first approach is eliminate non-standard speech. This approach try, try to prevent children from speaking their non-standard practice. Uh, this is the first feature. The second one is uh, non-standard feature is corrected. The third one is standard English is presented as correct and good. The linguistics uh, don't have, um, don't think this is a bitter one and believe this approach will be wrong for many reasons. The first one, it's wrong psychologically. Why psychologically? You can find it in the book. It's wrong psychologically. 
sorry, if I chronologically, because the children who choose the language will think that their language is inter uh, inferior, so they think they are inferior. Okay, it's also wrong socially. Why? Because a particular social uh, groups are less soluble than others, which makes make a division between people. The most important thing is it's particularly wrong. Why? Because it's most it's uh, more difficult to learn a different dialect of one's own language because they are similar. Also, the speakers will not want to change their language. If children suffer because uh, they speak non-standard English, the solution is not to eliminate the non-standard variety. Okay, the second one is the second one is take a biological a biological approach. This individual, uh, the individual has a right to continue using a non-standard dialect at home with the friends and in certain circumstances at school. It also advocates that children should be taught standard English as a school language. This approach may, uh, may be or seems to be successful on uh, only with writing. The third approach is teach and appreciate tolerance of dialect differences. This states that attitudes of society plays a big role in suffering of using non-standard language. It states that the attitudes must be changed, not the language. And some linguistics prefer to combine between the second and third um, approaches to deal with language di dialects or different differences of language or non-standard language. That's all of chapter number 10, and thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions, in fact. Fadgal decided, as well as his publisher, to have it as a separate chapter, uh, because now uh, we're moving from only uh, being critical regarding the use of language into uh, having uh, a national declaration, declaration of linguistic human rights of linguistic human rights. Uh, that happened because of many reasons. As a matter of fact, some of them we talk about, which is mobility among people. But uh, uh, during the last uh, probably 20 years, 15, 20 years, uh, there is a wave of immigration taking place in the world. You know, with the collapse of the old uh, world order and a new world order emerged. Uh, uh, economics have become very strained in many countries all over the world. Many wars have taken place. Waves of immigrants uh, have been moving from one place to another, and that really caused many problems in the world in terms of uh, identity, uh, attitudes, uh, language spread. And good that you brought this example about the Somali lady she was used in what I sent to you. She was speaking to her children in Swahili, trying to maintain their identity, and what, what was the what the reaction was <coughs> uh, from uh, the community there. At least the lady on, on on the restaurant could not even tolerate the existence of of another language being spoken, and those people were not recognized to be Americans uh, because they spoke a different language. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Amal, and uh, I leave the floor for your colleagues if they. Uh, have any questions to address you with or any comments? Anyway, in, uh, the, the, in, they try to put, put in this chapter what can be put in a number of books. They talk about language change so, uh, and the relationship between language change and uh, uh, social change and uh, which comes first. Uh, they, they give example regarding gender and how these societies language has been looked at as either discriminatory uh, uh, and, and you gave examples of that. Uh, they talk about language death and language shift and all these issues are related to language policy and language planning under the panel of uh, critical uh, 
language uh, planning. Then uh, another last thing that you talked about, which is the issue of attitudes and how attitudes would really uh, make a big difference in the society, even in, 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 in not only in linguistic harmony, but even social harmony. And this is why in Canada, Allahumma salli ala rasulullah, in England and places, uh, countries where they have more than one dominant language uh, competing with each other, they care about uh, building the society, bringing the society together and reducing the gap of linguistic difference uh, by different policies, okay? Uh, some will use uh, more, uh, it's called a democratic or more uh, accepting uh, policy by accommodating differences. Uh, some would uh, unfortunately use uh, some form of rejection policy where they would focus on uh, language spoken by the dominant group at the expense of other languages. And the United States is a very exa good example of that. Although the American, the United States claims to be the, among the largest democracies in the world, where people have full human rights, etc., but as we see in, in reality, that's not true. Uh, even you cannot speak your variety. And although so, there are some laws in the country, had to go on any objective and and and, and, and uh, in this regard, that would give uh, younger generations, especially Americans, if you're American. Uh, the liberty or the right uh, to be taught in your own language and, or at least uh, taught is something else but they will give you a chance to, to have access to private schools in your own language uh, but English is the dominant language and uh, one example of that is the all, uh, English only movement and, can you elaborate on that English only movement? What is that, yeah, Amal? Do you have uh, in depth information about it or see if your colleagues could really contribute to that? English only movement. Ma'ana, Yes, Amal? Yes, teacher. Uh, do you have any idea about English only? Yes, this is a, a movement in uh, English in English country to use of English in culture and in education, uh, but that, not other language. Okay. 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 Anybody else? I think uh, it, uh, it, is the, it is the movement that is used in the uh, United Antica. So uh, the, the English language is the only language that is used, and the other language uh, uh, maybe it's uh, uh, forbidden to be used. Like it's Spanish, I think, and that's, and that's it. Okay. Anybody else? Go to Amani. The movement that um, found that uh, English start to uh, treat him. So they decide to exclude other languages from education and political life and uh, just uh, rely on um, English as uh, an official language for uh, most American uh, states. And uh, I don't know if you uh, watch uh, a video that uh, that's on some social media, which uh, I am a person living in America. And he has to uh, go out from airplane because uh, they heard him uh, speak Arabic to his mother. Uh, and I think this is uh, not uh, a very accepted uh, 
behavior. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the matter is serious, and it's really affecting the lives of people. But on this English English only movement was led by, by Fakoyama. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting chapter, and Amal uh, did a good job of, of, of clarifying uh, the major points in related relating to this uh, chapter. of choosing the title language and, and humanity, although it, it's a uh, very, very broad title, very broad title, but you could write books on it.